Why are we doing this? It's one of the first undertakings of any car guy, especially if you have a child. Aside from changing your oil, right? Changing your brakes. It's like the most basic thing, right? Uh, it's something that you can do at home most of the time, right? Fairly easy, save yourself a couple bucks, but maybe you haven't done it before. So, in this video, you're gonna learn how. On this thing, we got some big old disc brakes in the front and some giant drum brakes in the rear. So we're gonna show you how to do both. We're gonna talk, uh, you know, in depth a little bit about the difference between the two, um, any little things you need to look out for. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, because all the parts on this are so giant, uh, you'll be able to see a little bit better versus like something with really small, intricate pieces, right? So let's get started. So, these ones are a little bit different than what you might see on like a regular car, truck, or SUV, um, but the concept is still the same. Uh, just on these, the actual like spindle and wheel bearing uh, nut in here holds this assembly, which uh, holds the rotor on. On most cars, there's uh, either a Phillips head screw or an Allen head screw on either side, and that is what holds the actual rotor on. But the components back here are the same as the regular car, more or less. Um, these are just a full floating caliper design, which you'll see on a lot of regular cars and trucks and SUVs, um, which means it uses a bracket with a slide pin set up. Um, and the caliper itself is essentially a different piece from the bracket, right? So on this one, it's a little bit different, but the bracket itself is actually part of the knuckle assembly. On most cars, the bracket that holds the caliper on is actually two separate pieces. Um, so what we do in that instance is actually unbolt the bracket um, and I just slide everything off all at once and then I get to the rotor first. But on this one, I don't have to do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the slide pin bolts out and I'm just gonna move this guy out of the way and I'll use my handy dandy little hook up here to support it because you don't want to put any kind of pressure or anything on these brake lines especially when they look like this because uh, that can cause them to actually crack and fail and uh, actually should probably see if I can source some front brake lines for this guy because these are really bad and this could actually be a big problem why um, if you have like spongy brakes and stuff like that if your lines look like this it can be because they're actually expanding when you press the pedal and this can cause uh, an issue so I'm gonna go ahead and contact the customer and make sure that he wants to do front lines on it um, but I would definitely recommend it if yours look like that go ahead and replace them uh, you will have to bleed the brakes afterwards, but it's not a big deal. Alright, so I believe these look like a probably maybe 17 millimeter, 18 millimeter. It's Ford, so it's probably an 18 millimeter. So we're gonna go ahead and pop those off, and then we'll show you guys the, uh, the guts inside there, the, the, the meat and potatoes, if you will, of the brakes. All right, so as you saw, I used the big channel locks. These are actually not our biggest, biggest. We just got the dust cover off. In here is the axle nut. I'm gonna take the, co the cotter key off and then take off the little lock cap and we'll get the axle nut off. Off 
on cars that have this wheel bearing setup, it's not supposed to be super tight, but I don't really think it's supposed to be hand loose with the socket either. So I got both these bolts out in the top and the bottom. And now all I'm doing is just jiggling it back and forth and pulling it out and towards me to get the caliper assembly off the bracket. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up onto that hook so that we don't damage the brake line. So as promised, here's the uh, the guts of the operation, right? So you got your brake pads, right, on either side. These are your slide pins. They move in and out with the floating section of the caliper. Always, always, always re-grease. Yes, we're gonna re-grease those. Never forget to do that. A lot of people forget to do that, especially the uh, the quickie, like in and out brake type places. Pad they slappers. Yeah, they always uh, skip on those. We don't skip those. Uh, here you've got your pistons inside the caliper. And then this stuff right here is what's described as the hardware for the brake pads. Uh, but essentially they're always just flimsy, weird little pieces of tin that kind of just you know, help hold the pad. We replace them. Yeah. As long as they're included with the kit, we replace them. Sometimes they don't include it. So we're gonna go ahead and get these pads out now. Huh? That one was not that bad. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and get these pads out. Oh, fuck. This is and Brandon thing. has the uh, the front wheel bearing. The stuff, front wheel which bearing we're gonna assembly. Clean. All pulled out so that he can get the whole brake rotor oh, off there. Look at that. It's not that heavy. But... Shut up. <laughs> All right, so the thing about rotors, right, is as Fred was saying, most of them just sit on there and they don't have the wheel bearing as part of them. This is definitely an older school brake setup. Uh, I hate these, they're much harder than regular brakes, but. It's not that bad as you saw to get to. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and unbolt these, which actually remove the rotor from this little like hub assembly. Remember we were talking about this hardware. What I normally do is I go ahead and remove it, and then there's gonna be, you know, some crusty and some crud under there. So I got some super fine steel wool and a little bit of brake clean. We're gonna go ahead and just scrub off any of the uh, surface rust and the, the crud and stuff that's on there, just so that all the contact points are really nice and clean. It's just little stuff like this that, uh, you know, helps avoid squeaks and rattles and weird stuff coming from your brakes when they're done. So, it doesn't look fantastic because there's some deeper rust pitted in there, right? But you can see it's a lot cleaner than it was and there's no big chunks of anything sitting on there now. So, I already did the top one and uh, I'm gonna check our equipment that we got and see if it came with new hardware. If not, I'm gonna clean these up. So here's our trick for compressing the pistons on the caliper. Um, not everyone wants to go to the auto parts store and rent the uh, tool to do it. So we normally just use a big ass pair of uh, channel locks. And essentially what I'm gonna do is take the old brake pad, we're gonna set it in here, right? And then I'm gonna compress the um, pad down against the pistons using the channel locks. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. These ones are heavy duty. All right, 
right, so now you can see we've got these guys all nice and compressed, about as far as we could get them to go, but these things are pretty heavy duty. So uh, they're a lot easier on a normal car. I'll tell you that. That's, <laughs> that's the, the theme for this video is yeah. everything's easier on other things. Exactly. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and grease up these slide pins. So you're gonna go ahead and just pull this rubber boot off and the whole assembly is gonna go ahead and just slide right out. So what we do is take a paper towel, clean up all this, wipe up inside there, and then we're just gonna smear it full of a whole bunch of the fresh grease. Make sure you use brake parts grease. Don't use regular grease. God. Again, again, dude, always interrupting my shot. And then we're gonna slide it back on <laughs> and we're gonna make sure that there's no air trapped in this boot um, when everything's all assembled again. All right, so I got all the bolts loose or out and now I just have to work my way over the ridge of dirt and crud that the rotor is being held on by. On a norm normal vehicle, this would be a lot easier. <laughs> Greasing slide pins. There we go. cleaning the hardware because it didn't include new hardware, even though I said we always replace the hardware, but that wasn't true because sometimes they don't include new hardware, which means we don't replace it because even though I bought the nice brake kit, it didn't come with new hardware. You're just a phony. Big fat phony. <laughs> phony. I always put a thin film of grease on the brake hardware as well. Um, because you don't want it to rattle and this is also where the pads slide on and rest on so you don't want it to rattle. Did I already say rattle? Alright, I went ahead and loaded the pad into the uh, caliper here because this one has a nice little retaining clip that holds it on. Uh, the one for the other side, I'll probably wait until Brandon's slow ass gets the uh, rotor on and then I'll slide the pad up on there and then we'll slide the whole caliper assembly over top and bolt it back on. All right, so this side's all back together. Brandon got the whole rotor assembly on here with the wheel bearing freshly packed with grease. Um, a lot of these use the same procedure wherein they torque down to a specific spec, you loosen it a little bit and then you torque it back down to a lower spec. Um, make sure that you look up, if yours uses this style of hub, make sure you look up those specs for your vehicle on the vast uh, information database that is available at your fingertips. Now, we've got the fresh pads loaded in here. All the contact areas have a little bit of grease on there. Don't grease this contact area uh, for obvious reasons. You don't want a bunch of uh, slippery nonsense on there. Uh, that would be bad. And then the slide pins on this torque down to 100. On most cars, it's somewhere in the neck of the woods of 15 to 30. But again, make sure you look up the spec for your specific car. All right, time for these. Personally, I hate doing drums. I don't know anyone who likes doing drums. Most of the time, I make Brandon do the drums because I just don't like doing them. Uh, and he's better at doing them than I am. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do drums. Maybe Brandon will help. I don't know, he's busy over there dicking around, doing nothing. So, first things first, obviously, remove the wheel, wheels, singular or plural. Now, most drums are just sitting on there and they're actually held on by the wheel. 
Uh, sometimes they are very, very, very stuck, okay? So you have to make sure that your e-brake's not set. And then some of them will have a little spot like maybe about here and here that have some threads. And you can actually thread in a bolt and tighten it and use it to press the drum off. If the drum is stuck, other times you can just take on this back lip and you can give it a little tap, maybe with a socket extension or something to uh, loosen it up. And uh, the whole assembly slides off and then there's uh, some terrible satanic things inside with springs and levers and yeah. I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. All right, well, that just slid right off. It wasn't stuck on there at all. Doesn't look too bad in here. But, see what I was talking about? You see all this mess, right? This is terrible. No one, no one likes to do this. Uh, I think it would be best if Brandon explained it to you guys. I don't know what any of these things are called. Time to do everybody's favorite thing, which is drum brakes. Now, essentially what I do first is I come to the adjuster. Let me get better there. Yeah. So the adjuster, sometimes they're on the bottom, sometimes they're on the top. And you make this pretty much as small as you can. It'll go to well to where it uh, is just loose in there. You take that out. And then we're gonna be getting all the springs out. You have to remember where they go. And I will tell you, uh, take pictures or my favorite thing is leave the other side together. Do not do both sides at the same time and take them all apart. The other side will tell you where all of them go because it's a mirror. Uh, if you do take both apart, I hope you have a good memory because it's gonna be horrible. Um, but yeah, the e-brake's gotta come off. And then we're gonna do these shoes and we're gonna do wheel cylinders, which are the little piece in here. And this is essentially the caliper for drums. So, if you've been following along with what I've been doing, there's a little bolt on the back here. Um, normally, the this is the e-brake lever. Normally that isn't held on with a bolt through the back. It's some sort of uh, little horseshoe squish thing, uh, which is like a little washer. And then uh, sometimes, you know, springs and whatnot. But that goes on to this piece down here and that's what pulls it and it causes your brakes to set. Also, I've been setting everything down here where you can kind of see it now. Um, I got little springs there. That's kind of what I do. I just make it again on the ground because not every one of these is all the same and yours will definitely be different than this one. And this is the first thing that I do, which is essentially retract that all the way in there. It threads, uh, but it's usually covered in gunk, so it's usually hard to turn. All right, and that is one shoe off. Um, normally, instead of having this extra spring and this piece, this piece is actually straight. And then it has a spring and a little hat. And all you have to do is twist that and the hat will come off. If you're trying at home, you'll probably see what I'm talking about. Until then, it's just random words. But I've actually never seen this setup on how it pulls on there. It's probably because these are much bigger and need a lot more strength. All 
All right, so we're gonna replace the wheel cylinder, which is this little guy. And first thing we're going to do is, first thing you wanna do is take off the brake line. You wanna break that loose, because if you have these out, that's not really going to break loose very nicely, or you might strip it. So it's better to have everything affixed, break that loose, let it drip brake fluid everywhere, and then once that's loose, everything else will come out. All right, what I like to do actually is once this is off and we're replacing it, start the brake line before you actually bolt it together. Uh, just because it's easier to wiggle everything than the brake line doesn't want to move and this isn't lining up because the last thing you want to do is strip it. Now that we've got everything back the way that it was, all you have to do is use this adjuster under here. Let me get the light set up a little bit better. So this adjuster, it spins, and that keeps it from spinning backwards. But essentially you're going to adjust it to where the rotor starts to drag on the pads. Um, I'm just going to do it, but I wanted to show you that. The last thing we gotta do is we gotta bleed the brakes. We got the lines for the front, so we're gonna replace that, and then we're gonna go through. We're gonna go through the whole bleeding process, which is pretty simple, especially if you can do this. That about wraps it up. This thick chicken's ready to uh, go back to its owner and cart a bunch of drunk people around all over the place. Whoa, I just disappeared. It got very dark there. Anywho. Hope you learned something. And, uh, you know, now you potentially might be able to do some breaks. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe you didn't learn anything. Maybe you just wasted all that time watching this video. But if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. You know the deal. And uh, check us out in future videos.